Hi, it's Deborah Peters. Welcome back to the Deborah Peters Show. As you can see by the color and the, and the lighting, it's starting to get dark. I've had a really busy day and I'm just getting this out to you now. Um, but welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for all the shares and the likes and the comments. And definitely let me know what questions that you have, how I topics I can cover for you, things that maybe you're struggling with in your business that you would like some help with, and it would be my pleasure to cover some of those topics in the next episodes. I've been thinking that um, as we're rolling into Q4, and it's autumn, it's, um, it's the last part of the year, you know, and it wasn't really all that long ago when we were coming through January and New Year's and talking about those New Year's resolutions, which I have a very definitive opinion on. I don't, I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I don't think they work. I think that what they do is they, they you, you know, when you're setting those, you're just really setting yourself up for failure. But that's another conversation for another time. Um, but we were setting goals, right? And we were designing our future and optimistic about the year. At least most of us were. I think maybe there might have been some people that weren't optimistic at all. But uh, hey, Landis, thanks for jumping on here. Um, and as you know, I'm, I'm kind of playing with the time frame as to when to run these. It's going to be most advantageous for people's schedules. So I really would like to know um, what works for you. You know, there's people in different parts of the world that are watching and, and I get that. And so I want to find a time that works for as many <laughs> time zones as possible. Um, so tonight and Landis, uh, you know, let me know, give me a comment. What would you like to, what would you like to get out of this show? Cause this show's for you. It's for you guys. It's for my tribe, my followers, the people that are watching the business owners, the small business owners, the entrepreneurs, um, all the coaches that are serving the entrepreneurs and the businesses and, and all the professional speakers out there, just everybody, you know, humanity. That's what this show is all about. I cover topics like health and wellness, fitness, scaling your business, um, having wonderful relationships, um, getting into alignment with yourself, spiritual growth, neuroscience, mindset, um, taking risks and expanding your life. And, and so I, I cover a broad range of topics. I have a really broad background in terms of the experiences that I've had. I've been coaching now for 20 years plus. Wow, can't believe it's um, been that long, but it has. And I started out actually owning a gym. So when I owned my gym, it was a real, like that was the game changer for me in my life, I think. It's where I really did a lot of self-discovery. I went through a massive spiritual growth process where I, um, I, I let go of an entire paradigm and complete belief systems around what I thought life was and what the world was, who I was, what my place in the world was. And um, it was, you know, I just never really looked back. I moved. It's the thing that, uh, it's that, it's that ownership, that, that time running that business that enabled me to, to move across country, to move different countries, and now to scale my business into 16 countries around the world. So what I'm sharing with you tonight is how do you get into a place where you're able to receive and you can scale your business, you can expand your business, and you can let go of all the resistance that uh, keeps you from scaling your business, that keeps you from achieving your goals, that keeps you from being happy. Um, and you know, so I wanna, I wanna share some tools with you tonight. And I think what I'm actually planning on doing, it's kind of rolling around in my mind and I'd, I'd love your feedback on it, is to perhaps um, start a group process with, with the various groups that I have online and get you guys into a private, um, a private page. So, so, okay, so let's just get into some top tips about how do you, how are you going to get yourself to the next level? So then, so first of all, 
you, just identifying that indeed that is what you want to create for yourself. You do want to go to the next level. And a lot of people say that they want to go to the next level, but saying it and actually living it are two completely different processes, two completely different paradigms, two completely different mindsets, because it's a responsibility. You know, once you say you want to live a larger life, you create a command, you know, it's like making a demand on the universe that you want to live a larger life. And then the universe starts to give it to you. And I've watched a lot of people that have made a demand like that. And when it starts showing up, they short circuit it. They find a, they sleep in or they don't return calls or they sit at their desk and play on, on Facebook all day, or they do, you know, show up to meetings late or, you know, don't take care of themselves and don't exercise. Like these are all ways of sabotaging yourself. And I don't think, you know, most people really don't look at it that way. It's, um, we have within us the capacity for greatness that is so infinite. You know, the possibilities for each one of us are, you know, they're not millions or billions or trillions, they're infinite. And so then why do people live a mediocre life? And it really just comes down to the relationship that you have with yourself. It comes down to your thought process because your thought process is what creates your vibration. It's what creates your emotional state of being. And whatever that vibration of being is, is what works like an antenna and draws from the unseen draws from the universe draws from the quantum field because it's plasticity it's formless substance it's the non-seen that coagulates itself into form through us as human beings and when you break it down like that it um it kind of demystifies whether you're going to get the goal or not, doesn't it? Because instead of thinking, okay, I have this goal, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get it, then you're canceling it out. It's like, okay, I have the goal, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get it. So what happens? It's like, it's like a cancel a cancellation. It just completely destroys the possibility of having that being delivered to you. Because on one hand you're saying come, and on the other hand you're saying no, don't. And this is where the shift has to happen. If you really want to go to the next level, you have to make a decision to not allow your ego, your monkey mind, your whatever you want to call it, to run away with you and to take over with fear, with doubt, with resentment, with just basically negative emotions and limiting beliefs, right? And there's ways of getting past that. So one of the ways you can get beyond that is to actually talk out loud to yourself. And I do it all the time. So especially when I'm working out. So here's my routine in the morning. So I wake up in the morning before I get out of bed, I lie in bed there for just a few minutes and I entertain in my imagination what I would do with like an infinite supply of money that got replenished every year and I didn't have to do anything for that. Like I didn't have to work, I didn't have to grind it out, didn't have to sacrifice or sell my soul or compromise. You know, I just imagine like what would it feel like to have say like a hundred million dollars a year and it got replenished at the beginning of every year and it was unconditional. What would you do with that money? So I just kind of lie in bed for a couple minutes. Like it's not long, like three, four minutes. And I just imagine, and actually this morning, because I sort of went into um, autopilot on that imagination process for a while, because you know, the ego will do that. And then today I just really kind of like stepped back from that and said, well, yeah, so what would I really do with that? And you know what came to me is what I would do is I would create, 
I, I would create a, a farm or a ranch, like something rural where children in the world that live in inner cities that never get the chance to experience what it's like to have a relationship with an animal like a horse or to take care of cows or sheep or ducks or chickens or whatever. You know, I, maybe I'd like create an old McDonald's farm or something and I'd bring in kids and they could live there. You know, they could live there for three months, six months, a year, and they could have their school studies and they could actually have the experience of caring maybe like for a baby calf from the time that that calf is born until it's a year old and watch it go through that whole process of growth and how it changes and how it develops emotionally or with a horse, you know, or, or a goat or just to be able to see the evolution of life and to contribute to that process and then to receive back from that animal, the love and the caring and the trust, because that changes you at a soul level. And I really believe that, that kids that never have, because I grew up that way, and you know, kids that never have access to that never really know what it's like to make that unconditional connection with an animal. And that's really powerful. So that's what I would do. So I kind of, I get up in the morning, I, I, I run that through my mind before I get out of bed. Then I say it out loud to myself as I'm getting up, all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory. And I say that 10 times out loud so I can hear the sound of my own voice because it really comforts and grounds me. And plus it brings in that belief, it brings in that all of life comes to me with ease, joy, and glory and makes it real. Wow, we're really not a, running out of light. So I'm going to make this quick. Then I sit down in my journal and I write out everything that I have an appreciation for. And there's a difference between appreciation and gratitude. So gratitude vibrationally is like here and appreciation is like here, right? So the reason is gratitude is, okay, we've escaped something and we're grateful that we escaped it. Appreciation is just pure love. It's just pure love. So you might be grateful that you have a nice home because before you didn't have a nice home, but now instead you just appreciate that you're living your life, that, that you have a home, period. It's just not because it's better than the other. It's just appreciation, right? Like it's my favorite tree. It's my favorite plant. It's my favorite sunshine, whatever you want to just keep it basic. And then I write in my journal for 30 minutes and I just, uh, you know, create, you know, cause we're born to be creators, but we forget that somehow it gets programmed out of us. And I actually made a note. I was having a conversation with, um, with my new, um, tribe building team whom I'll introduce to you soon on the weekend. And I said, you know, we are taught to forget our power. We are taught to forget how creative we are and that our thoughts are the creative tool. They are our magic wand. And we get taught to forget that. And I'm gonna talk about that in depth in another episode when we have more light <laughs> and I'm not running out of time. And then I sit down and I meditate. So please go to my YouTube channel and download the meditation onto your phone. And then I use the energy pull so the energy pull, so the meditation is really important because it gets you grounded. It brings you like from being out here trying to fix your life to being like in here connected to who you really are, like the source of you, right? The God source of you, the God force of you. So do that first and then do the energy pull. Because if you look back at the beginning of time, the way magic really happened is they pulled it in. They didn't go out and grind it out. First they pulled it in and people just showed up and opportunities just showed up. So I want you to learn how to do an energy pull, like start to make demands on the universe, start to make demands and ask and demand what you want. And then you have to allow yourself 
to receive. And many of us have blocks around receiving. So what you can do is you can just close your eyes at the end of the energy pull. You can imagine your solar plexus, which is just below your sternum and just above your navel. Fill it with light, fill it with energy, pull energy from the universe in through your solar plexus and out the back of your solar plexus. And then you can just dissolve any blocks you have to receiving because we can receive if we allow. We could just receive gifts and support and love and joy and good health. You just have to know to ask. So I like to just say, okay, any blocks that are there from any past programming, conditioning, um, ancestral ties, familial programming, um, limiting beliefs, past negative emotions. I just delete, destroy, and uncreate them. And then I say the clearing statement, right, wrong, good, bad, pod, pock, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. And that just dissolves it. Like it's the power of our language. So look, it's like 16 minutes. It's getting dark. I'm running out of light. I apologize for starting this so late, but at least I got it done. And I want to thank you so much for being a part of my show and um and for sharing and liking and inviting your tribe next time so i look forward to connecting really soon this is the deborah peters show chat with you soon love you